hello so this should be the second video but if it pops up on my timeline first depending on whatever upload happens first well you know um this video is the september release book calls the books that came out in september that i now have and when i tell you so many books came out in september that i wanted so many of them and i got a lot of them but it was near rivaling june how many books was coming out one right after another that i wanted and it was not fair that i could not get all my hands on couldn't get my hands on all of them because there's so many i wanted and hopefully one day i'll be able to get them all but i'm gonna start by showing you lord of eternal night by ben alderson now this came out september 4th um i'm not sure if it was self-published but i don't see a publishing thing on it and i think that's why it came out september 4th and not 7th with the other books i think it was self-published um i forgot to include this in my tiktok video when i did the books that came out this month um because it was not with the other books that came out on the 7th but i did read this i did talk about this in the book the video that should be posted before this one where i talk about the books that i read in september um i read it it's like a beauty and the beast vampire witchy retelling and it was pretty decent i mostly enjoyed it um and i can't wait to see more of this universe after that we have act cool by tobley mcsmith this is the same author who wrote stay goes so of course there's trans rep the main character he's an actor um and he gets to escape his small conservative town gets to go to new york after landing this audition he landed a coveted spot after his audition um at the school of performing arts in new york um and he's super excited but his parents only agreed to let him go if he agreed not to transition and to continue to pretend to be their daughter um and of course we can all tell that's probably not gonna last a whole lot so i'm excited to see where this goes um because he's like i'm an actor i can do this we all know what kind of toll not being true to yourself takes so we'll see what really happens after that we get into spooky books because it is now October and that was one of the I think that was one of the reasons just like with June we had an influx of queer books that came out that month and it was not fair that I could not get my hands on all of them um and September going into, uh, into October there was an influx of spooky books um it's not fair I couldn't get my hand on all of these either hands on all of these either so first up we have Dark and Shallow Lies by Jenny Meyer Sane and this did come out September 7th as well um in this town magic runs deep but secrets run deeper so this one um i know that it's based in louisiana um her best friend disappeared six months earlier and she's trying to figure out what the heck's happened um even though it's a town full of psychics but supposedly nobody knows and she tries to dig into that night and then that's when she realized that everybody in her town, including her own grandma, is hiding things. And her mother is even hiding things from behind the grave. Um, so yeah, so she's trying to figure out these secrets and she realizes she can't trust anybody. And she wants to know what the heck happened to her best friend. It's supposed to be spooky and haunting and arresting and spellbinding based on these reviews. And I cannot wait to see where that takes us. After that we have well this one is a spooky but I this also has a lot of secrets and murder um the inheritance of Orchidia Davina um by Sereda Cordova did I tell you the author yes yeah, it's the author of the last book this one um I was gonna say what's the person's name it's right there because I'm smart Orchidia Davina um, it's the matriarch of the family. She never goes anywhere. She never leaves her house. She won't go anywhere for vacations or weddings or graduations, literally anything. But when she's about to die, she sends out this letter and she's like, the stars have shifted. The earth has turned. The time is here. I am dying. Come and collect your inheritance. And so they show up to her funeral to collect their inheritance. They want to learn these secrets or whatever that she's always had. But instead, Arcadia the, turns into a tree and they leave. She leaves the family with more questions. Um, seven years later, the inheritance, their gifts pop up. Um, 
But now somebody's killing off the family trying to get rid of the entire line and they have to travel to Ecuador to find out her secrets that she's buried. Um, and I'm super curious to see where exactly that takes us because why not? This is another book of the month pick. So I got this last month because at least there's always at least one book a month that's like an early release usually. So I got a last month and I had to force myself to remember to include this in this video. We have The Girls Are Never Gone by Sarah Glenn Marsh. And this cover, I don't know what it is about this cover that I think is so beautiful. It's so stunning. Like obviously it's meant to be creepy and spooky, but I don't get that. It's just so pretty to me. It's just, I don't know. It makes me happy just looking at it. I don't know if it's the color scheme or what. But this one is also supposed to be spooky creepy. Um. Oh, and it's based on the real life haunted house in the author's family. But it's a ghost story. The main character doesn't believe in ghosts. Some mysteries are better left unsolved. Some spirits are better left forgotten. Yes, ma'am. But the main character, Dare Chase, she doesn't believe in ghosts. And there's this like tale of this ghost that haunts this lake because this teenager drowned 30 years ago. So she hunts this lake, this estate, and she, Dare doesn't believe in the ghost. She, but she does want to understand more about the circumstances surrounding it. So she's curious. She starts digging into that. But of course, other spooky mysteries pop up and... I think she's going to be forced to believe in ghosts after that. So I'm curious to see where this takes us though. I did a whole video on TikTok about spooky recommendations already. Um, and so far, Dark and Shallow Lies and this is on this list. I had a ton of them and I had to like manage to just do enough to feed the video. We also have Major Detours by Zachary Sergi. Now, this one is an interactive choices novel. So you make choices and it influences the path the story takes. And I love things like that. I'm so curious about it. And also look at these like little art things in the corner that I didn't notice till today. Because I'm bad at details. It's so pretty. Um, This is another one where I saw it and I was like, yes, that's it. And I think I have a queer art. I don't think people believe me. But sometimes I am good at just looking at a book and knowing not there's a lot of books that I know I want even without knowing anything about it I rarely actually know a lot about most books that I get I'm just something about it and I want it but I'm really good at getting books that are queer without knowing that they're queer I love when I accidentally do it and I do it a lot and this is an example um because I didn't know until after I got it that it was queer solve puzzles discover your truth and unlock the secrets of the tarot we've gotten several male people stop by today anyway I'm excited to see where that goes further on. September 7th is, the, I think, the day that I got mo the most books from because I'm still not halfway through them. Your Life Has Been Delayed by Michelle I. Mason. Now, this one, it gives me very much Manifest vibes. In the show Manifest, I never got past episode four, but in the show Manifest, um, the plane disappears for five years, and they come back five years later, and none of them have aged today never was trying to figure out what's going on trying to discover what led to it and so this is basically like that except their plane disappears for 25 years and come back 25 years later and as far as i understand they don't age a single day either they don't age nothing has changed for them but of course it does not mean that nothing has changed for their family their families have aged have moved on have gone about their lives some people don't even have family anymore and i think the main character's parents had died um Three of Jenny's grandparents are gone. Her parents are old and her little brother is now an adult. Okay. But so yeah, now she has to figure out what the heck to do with her life. 25 years are gone. She's still the same. But no one else in her previous life was. And that has me so intrigued. Um, Then we have The Last Legacy by Adrienne Young. And I love Adrienne Young's book concepts. I read her Fable duology and they were my favorite. But um, my leg is tired. Um, it wasn't my favorite, but I also have her Sky in the Deep duology, and what made me get this one is because it's a standalone, and also it's so pretty, and let me, I forgot that I don't, I have not shown you the inside covers for any of these. I mean, most of them were basic. I don't think we're missing anything yet, but how disappointing, and I only remember it because I wanted to show you this one. Look how pretty that is. That's pretty. Um, I don't think we're missing anything in the other books. 
But I'm gonna look real quick. See if there's anything worth showing. And I'm gonna try to remember to show them off this go round. After I continue. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything so far. Oop, I love the way that book managed to stand. I like how that didn't knock it over. You think at least this one would have a pretty inside. Anyway, yeah, so I went through those. But I'm curious about this. I don't actually know anything about this. I just knew it was a standalone, and that's what made me get it. Um duty desire destiny a captivating standalone about family and blood ties and reinventing yourself and controlling your own destiny what more could you want it's so pretty like i love this anyway what else okay this one this one this one it's so pretty no gods no monsters by cadwell turnbull I it's so pretty and like the cover is so much prettier in person than it was when I saw it on screen it's just so pretty and 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 that's pretty man my guy my boys I don't know what I'm saying um but it's pretty and I'm obsessed with it um but let's see. Da, 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 da. What did I tell you about this story? Um, from what I understand, at first glance, it seems like you know a lot of stuff going on. It seems like corrupted cops and racism and police brutality or whatever. But it's more to it than just any of that. There's monsters and mythology at play here. Um, and creatures from myth and legend come out of the shadows. And it's just so much. Like, I have no idea how to describe the summary without just reading the summary. And I'm trying to not do that. Um, because I'm it's already going to take me forever to get through these. But I recommend, like, looking into it because I'm so excited. Monsters. Snow gods, snow monsters. Just, I don't know. I'm super excited. I just it's so pretty then we have among thieves by mj coon this is yet another book i don't think there were several ones that i've shown you already that i wasn't gonna get at first glance and then i turned around and got including the last legacy and no gods no monsters and so on this one also came out september 7th um and i know next to nothing about this either I think it's like a heist thief novel. The main character already has a reputation as the quickest, deadliest blade in the dark side of the Carrowick, not to mention the sharpest tongue. She's been in hiding, running from the formidable guildmaster. She's forced to team up with a crew of assorted miscreants, smugglers, and thieves. And is trying to get freedom. But her new allies are as selfish as she is. And they all have plans on their own. Yada, yada, yada. I don't know. I am curious to see what comes out of that book. Hmm. Okay. I think these are the last two books that came out this day that I got. So there were more that came out. A Clash of Steel, Bone of Ruins, The All-Consuming World, and the Empire of the Vampire. We're all books I wanted, but Empire of the Vampire, I'm kind of sketchy because Jay Kristoff is supposedly not the greatest dude, and I'm sick of him. But also, he's an adult writer, so his books be expensive. I'll get out. Um... Clash of Steel, The Bones of Ruins. Didn't, and then there was like two of the books that I forgot to put on my list that came out. But anyway, these are the last two books that came out that day. First, we have Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Marina Garcia. 
and now this one I've been wanting since like two years ago I took a queer YA sci-fi and fantasy class and we were supposed to get this book for class but they were out of print so this is a reprint a new reprint um and unfortunately it was only in hardback but I do like this new cover um but yeah when I got it I've been wanting it since then you cannot tell me a book is out of print especially that it did well and is out of print I need it and so when I found out they were republishing it I was excited and I got my hands on it um I know it's vampire -y. that's all I know it's based in Mexico City um and also anything at this point Silvia Moreno Garcia this is my first book about her and yet she's an auto buy they're authors that I find out about and I see that they have so many books and at this point whenever they release something new they're just an auto buy and she's one of them and then we have the charm offensive by Allison Cochran and now this one is supposed to be like a rom-com type thing the main character Deb works on this reality tv show where you know ever after um where they script the perfect love story for the contested contestants yada 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 but his love life isn't all that great um but then there's this new contestant um charlie winshaw and he's far from the perfect prince charming he doesn't believe in true love and he only agreed as a last ditch effort to re ha rehabilitate his image um so of course bada boom bada bang love I'm super interested and also I saw there's a few bookstagrammers that I follow and one of them I saw talking about how much they love the way mental health was addressed in this book and so that has me a million more times curious and I can't wait to read it so that was the end of books that came out September 7th that was a lot I know and that's not even all the ones that just came out that day just the ones that I got my hands on um let's move on to September 14th not here to be like by Michelle Quatch. Um, look at how pretty this is. There's another cover. I don't know if it was a UK cover or what like edition it was, but it's of it's only in paperback and it's so pretty. It's pink and I want it. Um, but this is also so pretty to me. Stephanie Garber says it will leave a mark on your heart. She wrote the Caravel series. Caravel, Caravel. Maureen Johnson says it's intoxicating. They wrote the Truly Julia series. Um Anyway, let's see. Eliza Kwan doesn't need you to like her. She puts in more hours than anyone knows. It's the Friday Speak Her Mind, which makes her the perfect candidate for the editor in chief for high school paper, at least until Ed Jacqueline DeMartal decides on a whim to run against her. Her qualifications mean nothing because he just seems like more of a leader. Um. Her frustration spills over in a viral essay. She finds herself inspiring a feminist movement. She never meant to start a call between those who believe she's a gender equality champion and others who think she's simply the girl who cried misogyny. The frustration I got just reading this sentence because people really be trifling. People be misogynistic and was turn it around on you. Um. So the tension grows. They ask Eliza and Lynn to work side by side. It demonstrates civility. Eliza feels increasingly trapped by horrifying realization. She might be falling for the face of the patriarchy himself. That has me curious, not gonna lie. But at the same time, I'm really skeptical because I'm not gonna lie, get really disappointed where, and it's not to say that, what's his name, Quan? I think, Lynn, I don't. I was gonna say I don't know where I got Quan from. I was thinking of the heart principle. I get really frustrated when, and so I say Lynn is a bad person. I obviously haven't read it yet, so I don't know what kind of person he is. But I get frustrated when you have this like person who did you wrong, who did you dirty, and yet you turn around and fall for him. And it's not to say Lynn did it. I'm sure Lynn is probably a great guy, and I can't wait to see him as a character. I don't know. I just get frustrated when you do all of this just to turn around and just fall for them. I don't know. I don't know something don't be adding up to me so we'll see um next up we have the corpse queen by heather m herman um herman and this is supposed to be based in like the 1800s the spookiness this is another book i had recommended it's creepy corpse involving 
deliciously macabre and utterly decadent. I love that. <laughs> that should not make me fall in love, but it does. The dead do not keep secrets. Do not always keep their secrets. Sometimes the living must do it for them. So this is based in Philadelphia of 1855. It also gives me very much um, the stalking of Jack the Ripper vibes because of the corpse and her being just a teenage girl in like the 1800s and doing stuff with corpses. But her aunt sends for her her rich aunt sends for her um but she's a grave robber grave robber and stuff but yeah I'm curious to see where this goes I'm curious about everything over here truthfully there's so many and it sucks that there's so many more that I didn't get to have um another spooky book that I recommended was White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson Tiffany D. Jackson is an auto buy author haven't read anything by her but she's an auto buy author um but it says it's supposed to be creepy and frightening and R.L. Stein said they wanted to scream the creeps come on slowly then start to build when the cold shivers ran down my back I wanted to scream but I was too busy turning pages I had to know just how frightening will it get R.L. Stein said that and if our, the author of Goosebumps and if they said that you have to you have to read it um karen m mark mag Manus, mag Manus, the author of one of us is lying and courtney summers the authors of the project and sadie if they're all saying this is spooky and creepy and frightening and great why aren't you reading it you won't be staying here long i'll make very sure of that Marigold is running from ghosts. The phantom, phantoms of her old life keep haunting her. But a move with her newly blended family from their small California beach town to the embattled west, Midwestern city of Cedarville might be the fresh start she needs. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Household items vanish. Doors open on their own. Lights turn off. Shadows walk past rooms voices can be heard in the walls and there's a foul smell seeping through the vents which only mary seems to notice worse piper keeps talking about a friend who wants mary gone but running from ghosts is just a metaphor right as the house closes in mary learns that the danger isn't limited to maple street cedarville has its secrets too and secrets always find their way through the cracks I do not want to spend a whole month reading nothing but spooky books because I feel like I'm gonna get bored but every time I read more about these books the more that's what exactly what I'm gonna do this I think that's I'm gonna try my best to read at least four or five spooky books in October but I feel like I'm gonna get bored um okay this book makes me mad The Hollow Heart by Marie Rutap Rutkowski Rutkowski Marie Rutkowski this is a sequel to The Men I Lie and this actually angers my soul and it's I haven't read the first book this is another one that I got last the first book um I got it last year and it was just something about the the queer vibes it was given off um and that's why I got it and I'm trying to find this cover now this is the cover of the first book right 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 i've had this rant so many times this is the cover of the first book because my i'm actually slow i'm pretty sure my the first book is somewhere right over here and i'm too lazy to reach for it now that's the cover of the first book why is this completely different want to know why because this is the cover that matches this cover matches the hardback edition of the first not the hardback the paperback edition of the first book i hate they do it so often and it angers my entire soul they'll release a book in hardback it'll have a nice great cover or even just an average cover who cares it'll have one cover then they release the book like a year later in paperback and they'll completely change the cover and when the sequel comes out when the sequel comes out and it's of course initially released in hardback for whatever reason they make the hardback hardback the new hardback sequel match the paperback of the first book instead of the first hardback copy and that angers my soul and that is what they did here because you want to see the first book in paperback the paperback edition of this book is right here and that it angers me and I'm so mad I am angry because <laughs> why 
why but it's a duology so i can finally read them because i've been wanting to read it but i needed the sequel to be here and it is that came out you know of course september 14th i'm just angry though but uh, anyway a dark and starless forest by sarah hollowell this is another one that should have gone to my spooky halloween reads but it didn't um supposed to be witchy first of all plus size main character love to see that plus size witchy main characters like there's something in the forest and it's angry violently angry <sighs> don't you just love to see it um they live in an isolated house but a lake separated from the rest of the world by an eerie magic menacing forest they know it's for their own good after all the world isn't safe for people with magic and dairy feels safe most of the time until the night her eldest sister disappears when a second sibling goes missing feeling safe is no longer an option Derry will risk anything to protect the family she has left even if that means returning to the forest that has started calling to Derry and her missing siblings voices as Derry spends more time amidst the trees her magic grows more powerful and so does the darkness inside her the viciousness she wants to pretend doesn't exist but saving her siblings from the forest might mean embracing the darkness and that just might be the most dangerous thing of all i know i said i was gonna not read the summaries to y'all but like come on look at how pretty this is plus size witchy powerful witches we're gonna pretend i said witches because that's what i meant to say yes anyway next up we have defy the night by bridget camara look at how pretty this is now bridget Kamara is the author of a curse so dark and lonely that series which i still have not finished um but this is so pretty look at this a spark of rebellion is all it takes it's so freaking pretty i don't know how to express to you why you should think this is pretty if you can't tell it's pretty then you have issues also look at the inside cover don't you love that don't you love it um a kingdom divided by corruption the king desperately holding it together a girl willing to risk everything to bring it all crashing down don't you love it don't you want to read it did you feel silly for not pre-ordering this before it came out no it's okay this book also came out september 14th i had it like the first couple days of september because of course it was my book of the month pick um and it was so good again i talked about it in my last video where i talk about the books i read in september but it was so it was so it was so freaking good this is a professor this is a grad student candidate person he is not her professor he has never taught her he will never teach her so there is no unequal power dynamics um he even gets permission now this is a fake dating trope but he gets permission to from the dean to make sure it's good and okay and there's no conflict no complications no unequal power dynamics and she's like yeah as long as you don't he or she is like yeah as long as you don't dissertation that is the word i was looking for in the last video <laughs> As long as you're not the person judging her dissertation, then you're good. So they fake date. So her friend can date this dude that was technically her ex. Um, and it's great. And it's the a-hole to everybody but her trope, but he is not actually an a-hole. That's what I appreciate. They actually made him likable. It wasn't just some unlikable a-hole that you're supposed to like just because he's the love interest. It's great. I read it. I adored it. It's just, it's just uh. Anyway, is that the end for 14? I'm trying to make sure I got through all the books that came out the 14th. I oh, did forget one, at least. So this book, I still don't have, and it's actually making me angry. The Lost Girls by Sonia Hartle. This is a vampire book where this dude he's a terrible dude he goes he makes these girls fall in love with them agree to become vampires he turns them um and then like dumps them so he gives them eternal life just to break up with them just to be a terrible dude so the girls start banding together after finding each other and trying to stop him from doing this to another chick and of course he's gay 
Oh, um, but my copy is still not here. Somehow, I know this was a book I pre-ordered at least a month in advance, and somehow they were out of stock. Somehow, and it's making me mad. And I was saying it'll be here October twenty eighth, and that's in a month and two weeks, a month and a half after it was supposed to be out, and that makes me mad. But whatever. Um. So yeah, this also came out September fourteenth. Um. Am I forgetting anything else from this week? Out of the books I actually bought and pre-ordered, those are all that I have. Um, now, of course, there were other books that came out that week that I still want, but out of the ones I have, that is it. After that, we're moving on to the 21st. So, first up, we're starting with Beast and Beauty by Soman Chenani. Salman Chenani. Um, now, this is, I think, is an anthology different tales or whatever rewritten retellings of you know these fairy tales like Beauty and the Beast and Rare Riding Hood as far as I'm aware um you think you know these stories don't you you are wrong you don't know them at all 12 tales 12 dangerous tales of mystery magic and rebellious hearts each twist like a spindle to reveal truths of warning and triumph truths that free hearts long kept tame truths that explore life and death a prince has a surprise awakening. A beauty fights like a beast. A boy refuses to become prey. A path to happiness is lost, then found again. So, aren't you curious about this? So, Red Riding Hood is the first story. Beauty and the Beast is like the seventh one. I'm excited. I'm curious. I found this like just a few days before it came out, I think. Next up, we have Under the Whispering Door by T.J. Cohn. I adore this man. I've only read one and a half books by him. I read Wolf Song, which I loved, and I reread it last month, so it was, I talked about it in my video, on that last video again. Um, And I read half of Raven Song, which is a sequel, and didn't finish it because I was getting so sad. Um, But I love him. Every book that he has, the concept, I am obsessed with, even though I don't read half the time. But this is so pretty and I'm obsessed with the concept for this book. Um Welcome to Sharon's Crossing. The tea is hot, the scones are fresh, and the dead are just passing through. So the Reaper comes to collect the main character from his own funeral. He realizes he might be dead. Um he the Hugo, which is the owner of a peculiar tea shop, promises to help Wallace cross over Wallace is the main character. Um but even in death, he's not ready to abandon the life he barely lives. So when Wallace is given one week to cross over, he says about living a lifetime in seven days. And I read somewhere that he was talking about, like, death is only just the beginning. And he finds love or whatever. Let me see where that goes. Next up. The Other Merlin by Robin Schneider. Now, I've only ever read one book by Robin Schneider. And that was back in high school. And it was the beginning of everything. And it was pretty good. It made me a little sad, though. But it was pretty good and now this is obviously a merlin retelling as far as i understand and it gives me very much she's the man vibes because she switches places with her brother or at least i don't know if she actually has a brother if she actually has a brother and she switches place or she just pretends to be a twin brother um Yes, yeah, so I can't tell if she actually has a twin brother. Based on the summary, she pretends to be her twin brother. Like, I don't know if she's just pretending to have a twin and being that twin, or if she is, she does have a twin and she's pretending to be him. Where she goes to, um, goes to court pretending to be him because girls can't practice magic or whatever. And of course, um, she falls to the prince, she stirs up trouble, and then of course when the truth comes out, there are disastrous consequences. So yes, I love this color scheme, and it gives me very much the pan and bi flat colors, and I'm told there is bi rib in here, so I'm excited for that. Um, what else do we have? We have To Break the Covenant by Allison Ames, it's also supposed to be switchy, spooky, creepy. Um... That's all I really know about it. Um, I 
So mining explosion happened, moon basin is uninhabitable. So they move just outside of it. There are rumors about a haunted reputation that brings in tourists. Otherworldly girls with the knack for training crows and a new arrival of Piper whose dad has been contracted to stabilize the mine. But the more time Piper's dad spends down in the sweltering darkness, the more erratic his behavior becomes. He's seeing things and hearing things. Dirt clings to his skin as if the mind is refusing to let go. It's up to Clem, Nina, and Lizy and Piper to break the mysterious hold the mind has on him. But the only way to do that is to enter the mind themselves. And aren't you curious to see what happens there? Aren't you curious? Next up, we have The Iron Widow by Zeran J. Zhao. Now, I'm be honest, I did not want this at first. Because at first, I wanted it when I first saw it. I was like, queer rep? Yes, I want it. Asian rep? 100%. I want it. Oh, it's sci fi. And I'm not much of I didn't want it. I don't like sci fi. Like, I'll read it sometimes, but I'm not a big fan of sci fi. And I really don't like technologically futuristic books. I just, I don't know. I've never, I don't know if there's a reason for it. I just never have. So I didn't want it. But then I found out there was poly rep and I've been wanting more poly rep so badly so I had to get it because I mean I have plenty of queer books I have several Asian rep books and more that I want so I was like I didn't necessarily need this one but poly rep that's hard to come by so I had to get it supporter queer Asian author along the way get some poly rep yes why not i had to get it and i guess i will read it it's a love triangle they their pronouns are they them the authors um and there's a love triangle where they end up together i hate love triangles unless they're going to end up together and we never get that and then we get it here so i needed it um i think this is the last book for the 21st sidelined by Kara Bits. I also talked about this in the last video because I read this too in September. And these two boys, our main characters, Julian and Elijah, grew up together right across from each other. They were the best of friends. Almost something more. And then Elijah. I'm not sure which one is Elijah. Um I'm really bad at paying attention to physical description, so I'm not sure which one is Elijah and Julian. But Elijah does something dumb. Um, he broke into the coach's office to shot to steal money from the car wash that they saved up. Um, and Julian turns him in. Um, and shortly after that, Elijah was up and gone, and Julian has felt like hurt and betrayed and angry. Ever since three years later, Elijah's back and staying with them for a while and there's all these unresolved emotions and feelings and of course the whole situation um it's pretty decent i did appreciate how straightforward most of it was i hate when they draw out what happened they just keep referring to things as all oh, the incident or whatever and but it was pretty decent um i was scared to read it because queer books based in texas make me nervous queer books in small towns just make me nervous and that's coming from someone who is small southern towns queer books based in small southern town makes me nervous that comes from someone who lives in a small southern town i mean not too southern but like technically um oh no i think i did forget at least one um into the dying light by katie rose Poole. this is the third book to a trilogy this is the completion thing i do not remember anything whatsoever about this trilogy and truthfully i thought it was a duology so i almost didn't get this because i didn't realize that there was going to be a third book until i found out about it shortly before it came out and so i pre-ordered it um but yeah i couldn't tell you anything else because i thought it was just a duology and i didn't know a third book was coming um so i'm glad i didn't start reading it just to find out oh the third book's not out yet oh no yes out of all the books that came out those are the ones that i have um, and then on to the last week, September 28th, books that came out this previous Tuesday, Dark Rise by C.S. Packet, Packet, um, 
this book just came out my copy literally just got here like yesterday or the day before um so i couldn't put it in my tiktok video where i was showing all the books that came out because i didn't have it physically because this came in rainbow crate box my rainbow crate box um but it's super pretty and i don't know anything else about it the dark will rise who will fall and who will stand no idea the dark is coming ancient world of magic is no more its heroes are dead its halls are in ruins and its great battles between light and dark are forgotten only the stewards remember and they keep the, their centuries long vigil sworn to protect humanity if the dark king ever returns 16 year old doc boy will is on the run pursued by the men who killed his mother when an old servant tells him of his destiny to fight beside the stewards will is ushered into a world of magic where he must train to play a vital role in the oncoming war against the dark as london is threatened by the dark king's return the reborn heroes and villains of a long forgotten war begin to draw battle lines but as the young descendants of light and dark step into the destined roles old allegiances old enmities and old flames are awakened will must stand with the last heroes of the light to prevent the dark fate that destroyed the world from returning to destroy his own isn't that amazing is that i think they said this is technically an adult novel even though he's 16 um I don't know but I am curious to, to learn more about it um so yeah my copy literally just came like a day ago and I'm excited about it this also just came yesterday because I didn't find out about it till the day it came out and so I couldn't pre-order with the rest of them but for all time by Shannon Miles this one I'm super curious about um because as you see they're in love and apparently since the beginning of time since the world was made they've had this love story they find each other they fall in love yada 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 but they never get to know how it ends um and they find each other in each new lifetime so like over and over and over again they find each other fall in love never know where it ends and they decide to try to break the cycle just go around and it gives me very much the fallen vibes fallen by um what's her name um lauren lauren kate i think that's all this name it gives me very much because daniel and lucy well daniel never dies but like he finds lucy in each lifetime and fall in love and then she dies and then it goes over and over and over and i feel like there's another book that i've read where it does that um the immortal series the allison Allison no Allison not whatever her name is she has a series tag it gives me very much those vibes but yes so they find each other in each lifetime but they never get to see how their story ends they're trying to break the cycle and it had me very very curious and also this cover is beautiful so I needed it um we also got before we disappear by Sean David Hutchison a true magician never falls in love can you believe his Jack Nevins clever trickery and more flexibility make him the perfect assistant to the enchantress one of the most well-known stage magicians in the turn of the 19th century Europe without Jack's steady supply of stolen tricks the enchantress fames would have burned out long ago but when Jack's thievery catches up to them they're forced to flee to America where they'll perform at Seattle's Alaska Yukon Pacific World's Fair Exposition, but then a new magician arrives on the scene performing tricks that defy the imagination. Laszlo's slow show overshadows the enchantress, and Jack has no choice but to hunt for Laszlo's secrets. What Jack uncovers is, isn't at all what he expected. But how Laszlo tricks is Willem, a boy who can seemingly perform real magic. As the rivalry between the enchantress and Laszlo grows, so too does Jack and Willem's affection. Soon Jack has to choose between the woman who gave him a life and the boy who is offering him love. It's his new star-crossed romance about the magic of first love. Uh, and also, look at this really pretty spine. I'm obsessed. And look, look at that little smirk he has. Look at that little smirk. Um, also, after that, we have the last graduate by Naomi Novik and this is the sequel to a deadly education which I don't don't remember anything about it I got it last year and of course I don't read books unless the series is completed so I haven't read it um but I know it was based in a boarding school and things happened so yeah that's the sequel to this this is the sequel to that 
Um, next up, one of my most anticipated books is Beast of Prey by Ayana Gray. Um, and look at how pretty, pretty. And also, look at the the end pages, the end pages, the map, and I adore it. Also, for God, um, sorry. Is there a map in this? Is this a map digitally? Yes, there's a map in this book too, in Dark Rise. I forgot that there was a map that I wanted to show because it is really elaborate. Um, but yes, so the hunt begins. And this one, I know there's mythology. Um, there's mythology and creepiness and a forest. Um, and magic and splendor. A hundred years after the rap rupture scarred the sky and devastated the land, its people, magic is no more than a myth. Until one night when Kofi, an indentured beastkeeper at the infamous night zoo, unexpectedly unleashes a dangerous, untamed power that has been secretly brewing within her for years. She sets into motion a chilling sequence of events that not only upends her whole world, but also links her to a complicated stranger with secrets of his own. As a warrior in training for the elite sons of the six, Econ Econ's task is to stop Kofi in at her attempt to flee the night zoo. Instead, she saves him from the Sh Shitani, the monster that has plagued Lakosa. Kosa, look, Kosa for nearly a century and stalked Ikan's nightmares. Following their chance encounter with the beast, Kofi and Ikan, each with a hidden each agenda, strike a tentative bargain, teaming up to capture Shihani, a hoped-for solution to their dire circumstances. To do so, they must enter the greater jungle, a world steeped in wild, frightening magic and untold dangers. But once the hunt begins, it quickly becomes unclear whether they are the hunters or the hunted. Um, oh, this is going to be a series? Ugh, that's disappointing. It's only disappointing because I really wanted to read it and I don't feel like waiting for the series to be completed. But I just don't think I could bring myself to read it when it's not completed. Um, but it has already been approved for a Netflix adaptation. I think Netflix. Either way, it's being adapted, but I don't remember if it's for Netflix or not. Um, up next... Once, a broken, Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This is by the Curaville series author. And what I don't remember what this is about. I don't remember if this is in the same universe. I think it is. How far would you go for happily ever after? All stories are made of both truths and lies. What matters is the way we believe in them. For as long as she can remember, Vigiline Fox is believing her true love and happy endings until she learns that the love of her life will marry another. Desperate to stop the wedding and to heal her wounded heart, Vigiline strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts. In exchange for his help, he asks for three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing. But after Vigiline's first promised kiss, she learns that bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game and that the Prince of Hearts wants far more than she'd pledged. He has plans for Vigiline, plans that would either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite tra tragedy. Tragedy is another word that I love the name of, but yes. So this, I'm curious. There's another cover. I think it's also pink. I don't like it. Next up, we have As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. This is a third book in the um, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. It's the end of it, and I've heard a lot of great things about it already. Um, and I love the gray black ish tones of it um so now i can finally read the series cannot wait to get started um after that we have autumn's tithe by hannah parker this literally only just got here today i thought i was gonna have to show a picture again because it, i couldn't have to show a picture in my tiktok video because it was not here until today and he told me it was coming october 8th and i was like why are you coming a whole week after over a week after you were supposed to be here but it's here and it's super pretty and i'm super excited about it her only ally is about to become her greatest enemy every girl in balamore dreams of being chosen by the sky for some because the fae promised to deliver them to the beautiful fairy realm for larkin because her closest friend was chosen the previous year she tries to accept her fate until she discovers that her friend is in danger and the promise of eternal joy amongst the fate could be a lie larkin breaks the sacred 
covenant between humans and fae and enters the fairy realm to find her friend her only ally is the finder a fairy prince of the autumn court who now owes her a debt after she unwittingly saves his life their bond is both the key to her survival and possibly her downfall underneath the glittering facade of the fairy realm sees sees a shadowy pact wit in blood betrayal and lust for power at any cost a tithe must be paid by each of the court's of Erodian, both finder and larkin's people face retribution if the tithe goes unpaid unpaid and their bond could destroy the foundation of the courts and the human world forever can you believe it's also a really simple map here also kind of like i think simple maps are kind of underrated to be honest well yeah so that's that's here I'm super excited for this um i've been waiting for this forever and it's here. Let's see anything else. Oh, there are other things. I have pictures because these books also are not here yet. So Summer Suns by Lee Mandela. Um, I'm so excited for this. It is so annoying having to wait probably a full month for this book to get here when it's already out. Came out, of course, September 28th. But it's going to be a party. I, I love Rainbow Crate and I love the way they choose books. But sometimes it is frustrating. I kind of wish I wouldn't choose books that came out at the end of the previous month for the next month's box because I have to wait pretty much an entire month after it came out for it. It's already bad enough if they choose a book that comes out in the beginning of the month, but they don't ship their boxes into the man or the middle or the end of the month and have to wait several more weeks. But then especially if I have to wait a whole nother month after the book came out to get it. And this is going to be their October book of the month. It means I have to wait until the end of October to get my hands on this book. But it's fine. I cannot wait for it to get here. And then the other one. Alcray did the exact same thing with Lake's Edge. This book also came out September 28th. I will not have it until... Actually, no. Is this October's book or is this September's book? It could actually be September's book. And I can't remember if they're just late. Let me go to Alcrate real quick. Because now that I've mentioned it, I don't actually remember if this is September's or Alcrate's book. Um, It is September's book. They just still have not shipped their books. So Alcrate didn't do the exact same thing, but I still don't have my hands on it because they've still yet to ship, ship September's books. My bad. Um, but they've done it before where they'll choose a book that came out the end of the previous month, which means I have to wait forever for it. But yeah, so that's, I don't even know how many books. I didn't count the amount of books that I just showed you. I don't think I want to know the amount of books that I got in September. Um, I'm hoping that's all the ones that I have and will hopefully have in my hand soon. Um, the two books from Rainbow Crate Now Crate. Aside from that... I don't know if not oh well I might put it in the comments or whatever if I realize I forgot a book knowing me I probably did I know you unlikely stayed this long but if you did thank you and until next time